Next on Worcester News Tonight, the Worcester Public Schools are helping kids prepare for winter by holding their annual Coats for Kids fundraiser. Plus, a look back at a busy election night in Central Mass. The big numbers and big winners. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. According to the U.S. Census report, nearly a quarter of Worcester residents live at or below the poverty line. With the cold weather on its way, Worcester Public Schools is looking to lend a helping hand to families who may not have the money to provide children with proper clothing. The Coats for Kids program has been keeping students warm in the city for more than two decades. Our Cam Jandro joins us now live with more. Cam? Anna, Worcester Public School says it's quite common for kids not to go to school because they simply do not have the proper attire for winter weather conditions. And with homelessness still being an issue here in the city of Worcester, Worcester Public School says this drive is as important now as it ever has been. As the temperature in central Massachusetts goes down, the demand for winter coats goes up. The Worcester Public Schools is hoping to keep every student warm with a coat this year. People don't realize how you know, important a coat is. It's just not giving them warmth, which it is, but it's giving these kids confidence. The district will raise money through coats for kids to purchase jackets, sweaters, hats, and gloves for kids through grade 12. The Central Mass Housing Alliance reports there are more than 500 kids under age 18 who are homeless. It's why program coordinator Elizabeth Vecchio got involved. One little boy actually hugged me and thanked me because he got to have a good night's sleep because he, he had to sleep in his coat because there was no heat in the house. So when I hear a story like that, it motivates me to move forward. In 2017, more than 3,000 students were provided some form of clothing via the program. The number of students has increased following two hurricanes in Puerto Rico. We had over 240 students come and live, uh, live in Worcester. And they were in for a rude... Uh, surprise when they found out how cold it was in, uh, in the, during the winter time. The Worcester Public Schools have already received requests from 2,600 children. They still have nine more schools to get a list of students who need warm clothes heading into the winter. The, the one goal we have is that we are able to give every child that needs a coat a coat. Reaching out and making, and, and making a difference in the life of a child and doing kind acts and especially during the holiday season, we all should be doing that. Now the drive runs through the winter. If you are able to donate, you can donate both clothes as well as money. You can reach out to the Worcester Educational Development Foundation. Anna. Thanks, Kim. Switching gears now, ahead of Veterans Day, the Salvation Army held a ceremony honoring men and women who have served the country. The event was also celebrating the 100-year anniversary of World War I. Women dressed up as donut girls, representing the Salvation Army officers who went to the front lines assisting soldiers and thought of ways to make them feel more at home, like baking them fresh donuts. Tonight, all veterans received a medal to honor their service, but there were three people who got a special recognition. Folks who have, uh, have distinguished themselves you know, in their service, not just necessarily in the war, but also to the community. You know, after the war, so a special plaque, special honor uh, of recognition of their uh, service to the country and to the community. From the Salvation Army to veterans, that we care about them, that we appreciate them, that we want to honor and salute them for their service, and we appreciate the relationship that we've had with them throughout the years. The Salvation Army also celebrates its 135th anniversary in Massachusetts. The College of the Holy Cross held a discussion tonight about the repercussions of legalizing sports gambling on a college campus. Holy Cross professor Victor Matheson and Boston College professor Reverend Richard McGowan led the discussion. They say college campuses, students and student athletes around the country are facing risks after the Supreme Court's ruling allowed for legalized gaming. Matheson doesn't think it will affect Holy Cross because not enough bets are being placed on their games, but believes bigger colleges could be impacted. Going to be so many more opportunities for uh, athletes to be able to bet on games. And of course, what the NCAA worries is that with those opportunities to bet on games also comes the opportunities to engage in corruption. Currently, the NCAA has a strict no gambling policy. Matheson and McGowan believe the NCAA will not change their stance anytime soon.
Now to election 2018. It was a busy day for residents and city staff in Worcester Tuesday as tens of thousands headed to the polls to cast their ballots. Close to 50,000 people in the city voted in the statewide election. Worcester has more than 111,000 voters, meaning about 44% of registered voters participated. In 2014 state election, only close to 39,000 people voted, which is less than 11,000 people the city saw earlier this year. Of the close to 50,000 people who voted in Worcester, 9,000 of them took part in early voting. Incumbents carried the night for the most part. There were several contested races around Worcester, including a heated contest for an open seat in Worcester's 17th House District. Our Rosalind Flaherty has more. State Senator Ryan Fatman spent Wednesday morning thanking voters. Standing out in his hometown of Sutton, he's grateful they were sending him back to the State House. Every single election where I've ever run, I go door to door, knock on people's doors, introduce myself, tell them about me and what I believe. The Republican retained his seat for a third term representing the Worcester and Norfolk districts. He beat his Democratic challenger by more than 10,000 votes and says he will continue to work on issues like education reform. Making sure that local aid is getting to our towns for public safety, education, um, local services that really matter because these towns are dependent upon it. State Representative Paul Frost is also heading back to the State House to serve his 12th term. The Republican lawmaker received more than 11,000 votes and says his key to success is he tries to work with everyone. And I'm not afraid to be a Republican but I'm not afraid to be bipartisan. And I think I've been able to appeal to enough independents and enough Democrats as well as Republicans to be able to maintain uh, this longevity. David LaBeouf will be heading to Boston for the first time to represent the 17th Worcester District. LaBeouf earned a big win in Worcester to defeat Republican Paul Fullen. He says he really tried to talk and listen to voters. Making sure that we really directly engage with people. LaBeouf says one of the first things he'll tackle is changing local aid and school funding and most of all wants people to earn his trust. Making sure that we address really um, our health care system, especially around uh, differentiation of prices for prescription drugs, uh, making sure that there's a minimum standard of care. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. City real estate lawyer Catherine Toomey coming out on top for the Register of Deeds position. Toomey has 18 years experience in real estate law. She says she decided to run for the position when longtime registrar Anthony Vigliotti announced he was resigning. Toomey says her vision is to bring new technology. Technology is where it's at. We want to have better access. I, and also where the county is so large geographically, I have put so many miles in my car. I think it's time for people that live in the far reaches of our district to be able to see me. And I think a face is important. And my goal is to actually get out there and drive to Gardner and hold office hours and to inform people and educate people about what the Registry of Deeds is and how it works for them. And if they have any um, ways they can use it in ways beyond that they ever imagined. Toomey beat challenger Kate Campanelli with a 2-1 to one margin in Worcester. Leaf collection in Worcester started earlier this week. The service allows residents to sweep their leaves onto the street and then street sweepers will pick it up. But some city residents say the service isn't as easy as it sounds. Our Brittany Schaefer explains. When the signs are posted on his road, Elliot Smith prepares for the city's fall leaf collection. Wednesday morning, he raked 23 bags of leaves to clear his yard. When I come home last night, saw the sign posted for the leaf pickup. So I come out early this morning with a barrel. The 74-year-old has lived in Worcester his entire life. He says the city has always done a great job clearing leaves shortly after the no parking signs are posted. That's good. That's fine. And... Uh, I, I have no complaints. It's all been within two or three days. This year it worked out perfect. But not everyone has had the same experience. Jamie Shannon says he's had to wait up to two weeks for crews to remove leaves from his street. You see them in the area, you know, and uh, hoping that they would get to, you know, your house one day and it takes a while. So I, we had to, you know, do a couple cleanups because the wind you know, blew all the stuff around. Shannon says in the past years, he has gotten rid of leaves on his own because of the unpredictability. Well, I would like to put them out so I don't have to do it myself, but uh, I probably won't wait this year. Worcester Department of Public Works Commissioner Paul Moosey says resident complaints haven't gone unnoticed. The biggest 
you know, complaint that we see is the signs are up for too many days. He says the city has developed multiple ways to make the process easier than ever. You can email us, you can get us through social media. The city's website will have updates every day showing a map. We make every attempt to let our residents know what's going on. The free service costs the city around $200,000 a year. DPW is currently clearing roads with Wednesday as their trash pickup day. Moosey says the order rotates every year. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight.